With a wide array of ways to get torn to shreds, Neo could have been a maddening game, punishing those who don't play as safely and boringly as possible. Team Ninja understand a good combat loop, though. They may have a thing for masochism, but their devs get that banging your head against a wall doesn't stay fun for long. That to make a difficult encounter a challenging one, you gotta have incentive to be active rather than passive. Enter the start system, an on-the-fly switch essentially for attack power, speed, and maneuverability. A lot of action RPGs, including Neo, have builds that prioritize different properties or even offer different attacks. There certainly is value to be had in hard commitment, hedging your bets and sticking to them when faced with a tough foe. But having that be a split-second decision makes combat more about constant re-evaluation than pre-planning. In essence, you can go back and forth between fast dodges with weak strikes, hard-hitting but slow attacks, and a style somewhat in between. It gets players to assess what works and what doesn't in the moment, to monitor the general speed and aggression of enemies and alter their approach accordingly. For example, when facing a sluggish axe wielder, it might be worth switching to the high stance for those meteor hits, as you're not going to have to duck any mad attack patterns. I get ever so slight DMC4 vibes from this, the jump to real time style swapping making it a lot easier for players to figure out what works best on who in as little time as possible. It may not be as deep or varied as Dante's moveset, but there's potential there. Dart from a parry in the mid stance to a heavy attack in the high stance, or bang out some snaky maneuvers in low before hitting them with the mid stance killers. It's not just a game of rock, paper, scissors, mixing things up between enemies, but doing it in the middle of a fight depending on the situation. However, all this action uses up key. They'd call it stamina, but I guess FromSoft has a trademark on that one. Really though, Neo's got a pretty novel system for getting around depleting your gauge. Rather than waiting to recharge after blowing your load, the the key pulse technique keeps you active in what would otherwise be downtime. Run off a chain of attacks then smash that R1 button before hitting anything else and you get a refund on that lost stamina. But don't bust out a key pulse too early, you gotta put your neck on the line and aim for the last second. You only get a refund on your stamina from where the little white bar has reached. Wait until just before your receipt runs out and you gain the most for your trouble. So why is this a pretty cool mechanic? Well, in the moment it gives skilled players more to think about. Extra stuff to do with their hands that requires just enough timing to potentially risk getting hit by a subsequent attack, thereby making the window on the next dodge even tighter. In the bigger picture, however, this aids the more assertive playstyle, making dangerous performance more enticing. With the potential to get your key back, there's greater incentive to go through whole attack chains without fear of penalty. And don't get me wrong, this ain't no get out of jail free card, the penalty is large. Run out of key and you are completely immobile for a short time, open to all sorts of rudeness. In fact, some enemies run off a similar stamina system to your own, making it even more tempting to lay down a consistent beating. Key pulls to keep your energy up and make use of changing stances to leave them open in the same manner. You gotta remember as well, this isn't some secret rude dude glitch. Key pulsing is taught in the game's tutorial because it's used to purify these yokai realms that kill your stamina regen otherwise. Neo expects a fair amount from you right out of the gate, but it's technically not completely necessary, just a smart idea for those who can multitask. Key management is paramount to staying alive, so the prospect of beating the system by getting the most out of this seemingly finite resource is all the more alluring. Both of these, the real-time changes of approach and ability to quickly regain stamina, make Neo pretty neato by themselves, although it would be cool if there was some way to combine them. The Madmen. Because R1 is lucky enough to be used for stance swapping, weapon switching, and key pulsing, it becomes this multi-purpose tool. Flux, an ability you can purchase very early on, sets your key regain starting line ahead of what you just lost. You just have to change stance right as you'd go about your usual key pulse routine. Let me break this down, because honestly, I did not get this at first. If you started depleting your stamina from the halfway point, wait for it to turn completely white, then hit R1 and a face button to change stance, you'd start getting it back from maybe the two-thirds point rather than the original half. And not only does this mean another small technique for that extra edge, further encouraging aggressive play as you're receiving interest on your stamina, there's a little left brain right brain thinking going on too. Rather than always hitting the same button to get back your expenditure, you have to keep track of what stance you've swapped to. Don't go for a heavy attack in high thinking you're still in low. Have a third eye on where Golden Boy Will is holding that weapon. This is made even crazier with Flux too, offering another sliver of energy for a double stance swap. Only you can't just go back to where you started off, making it not just riskier to get it done before you get slapped around, but trickier to 
follow what your next move is. The road to high level play isn't paved with the odd slash followed by a hasty retreat, but making the most of the time between enemy attacks. Neo shows that a title with aggressive enemies doesn't have to be handled with a 10 foot pole. Unless you use a spear, actually, that was a rubbish analogy. Team Ninja offer up bits to do with your hands in between slicing and dicing, but encourage you to stay in the fray. You're not made to circumvent enemy attack patterns with a beeline for the exit. Take advantage of each different stance and keep your key up whenever you can. I'll fully admit I'm no expert on this. I'm not done yet with Neo, it's busting my balls. And I love it. I may not have the coordination to pull this off consistently, one could say I'm shit, but the allure of an alternate approach rewarding multitasking in the face of these spooky goobers keeps me pushing on. From what I've played, the game bangs, and I haven't gotten to too many enemy types that completely flip this skill divide on its head, except this lady's dumb flying gimmick. And this geezer. The bosses overall are kind of hit and miss. But other than that, it's pretty good. There's value in patience, but sneaking away is a crutch in Neo. There's far more skill and satisfaction in being bold. Anzo. Do you seriously follow this pretentious little prick? <laughs>